Hello again everyone, I'm Norse Tia, and we are playing the UN Beginner Stellaris. Um, so if you've followed all the episodes so far, you'll know that all I've done is loaded up the game, no mods, nothing crazy, and I've just picked one of the starting races, which is the United Nations of Earth, and I am playing the game. I'm talking through what I'm doing in extensive detail. Um, so if you do watch this and enjoy it, then obviously please do uh, drop a like on the video, subscribe and come and see me on Twitch midday on a Sunday. Without further ado, here we go. So at the end of the last episode, we had just failed to get this system in the early game. You can see a few of my ships are still lost in the abyss somewhere. Um, so unfortunately, in the last episode, the ruthless capitalists at the Valdari syndicates decided they hated us. So we have a rival sat on our borders. Right at the end of the episode, I also upgraded this star base. So it'll take a bit of time, but it's coming. Right. Without further ado, let's go. Oh, Alpha Centauri has an unemployed person. So what can we build at the moment? And what do we need at the moment? Um, we've got a... Sirius is probably a good one for food. Look at Look at all the food going spare there. We've got plenty of housing, so I don't want to build another city district just yet. Are we short on any raw resources? We are a little bit short on energy credits. And although this isn't a great planet for energy credits, it's better than no energy credits. So I'm going to go for that for the minute. So that's that going. You'll notice we are now over our empire sprawl as well, so I need to keep a little bit of an eye on that. At the moment, we're only a tiny bit over Empire Sprawl. So you can see it's having a minimal effect on technology, a minimal effect on tradition, and a minimal effect on campaigns, which I'm not using really anyway. But that will start to hurt in the long term, so we don't want to let that build up too high. Ooh, fossils discovered on Sirius Prime. Fossilised remains from several different species that do not appear to have been indigenous to Sirius Prime have been found in a large and secluded valley on the planet. They all date from roughly the same time period, within the span of a few centuries, some 3.6 million years ago. Each of these species seems to have evolved its own unique biosphere, and all appear to have been sapient. Strangely, every fossilised individual found so far shows signs of having met a violent end. Curious. So we have got an archaeological site on Sirius Prime. Excellent. In fact, we've got another one that we're not researching yet, so we need to send a science ship there at some point, basically. And now we've we've established that we've got borders here and here. Our science ships are maybe a little bit more free to spend some time on some of the slower missions. Ah, we can adopt a tradition. So what have we got? So we've already cleared expansion. We took technological ascendancy because I love tech. We've got a few options now, though. We have got a hostile neighbour, so supremacy could be handy. We might want to go down the diplomacy route. I'm not sure if I want to join their um, federation or not. Let's have a quick look. Well, these guys like us now because we've been improving with them. They're still suspicious. What do we have to do for some of these people? Other thing I'm going to do, actually, is the ones that dislike us most. Oh, they're neutral, at least. I'm going to improve relations. There's no point. The Valdari Synergetics hate us. So let's stop wasting our time there and move him somewhere where he might do some good. These guys are neutral, though, so they're probably going to be more inclined to trade with us. I wonder if we could trade anything with them. This is I'm, I'm mainly thinking about this just to improve our relationships a little bit. So, yeah, let's just see. Um, I know. Do you, do you want some food? They do want food. I'm going to make it a nice long deal. You could just give them that. Um, no, no problems. I don't like them that much, though. Um, can you give us some minerals? We are running a bit low on minerals. Minerals? One? Sure. Um, and the main reason I'm doing this is it'll give us a little short-term boost. You see, 
we're slight, we've given them a slightly better deal. Main one is I just want to get a deal going so we build up some trust with them. Valued clients. There we are. We're a valued client now. That doesn't help us with this, though. So I'm going to say probably I'm not too fussed about being in their federation. So we go back again. Sorry, I got distracted. Somewhere down here, they should be offered a chance to join the federation. Well, they hate us, so that's not going to help. In fact, on so many levels, they don't like us in terms of in terms of a federation. So minus 3,000, they're suspicious. Well, it doesn't seem likely that we're going to get them. So I'm not going to panic about the diplomacy ideas for a while, tradition. Domination is more about having smaller nations around you. Again, not really what we're doing. Harmony. Uh, few things. I don't. My populace are fine. I'm not too worried about any of this. It's, a lot of this is about stability. Prosperity. Cash. The obvious thing there. Lots and lots of things that are good for your economy. Ours is okay at the minute. So I'm probably going to go either supremacy or discovery. So discovery is the classic boost science. Supremacy is just out and out violence. So what am I going to go? If we're going to do discovery, we probably want to do it early. And I think we can hold them off in terms of violence for a short period of time. So I'm going to go discovery purely because I like it. And it feels very Star Trek to boldly go. You can see they've even... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let's go for Discovery. Uh, we can map the stars, which we probably won't do, to be fair. But we increase our anomaly research speed a little bit straight up. Sure, let's go down that route. And zoom back in. Okay, so let's let the game tick. They have accepted the trade deal. Which is great. So if we have now a look at F1. You notice they have already improved a little bit because of the trade deal. But hopefully their trust of us will improve over time as well. We shall see. What I don't really want is another hostile, well, especially a hostile federation. Way Conclave of Lontok. This is what I was hoping would happen with the Valdari. They've opened their borders because they they clearly trust us a bit now. Wonderful. So if we F1 it. Yes, our, our, our shameless our shameless pacification of them has worked. It just means we can move through their territory, although to be fair, they are absolutely tiny. I'm not sure how much we need them, but you know, every little helps. If you look our ships that were missing are now back. So here's our construction ship back in the system. Might as well pick up these resources. Well, I'll do the research station first. And where's the science ship? There it is. So again, we'll stick with what we were going to do for now. I just want to survey these last few systems just to tick them off. For now... And then we emergency jump the Tereshk over a bit later. Ooh. We've discovered a new archaeological site. Where is this? Is this the one in Conviab? We did. Brilliant. I don't know how we've discovered that. But we have. Hole in the ground. I think, I think it usually happens if another empire's science ships have discovered them. Orbital telemetry shows a massive impact crater on the surface of Conviab. 9A. It was not caused by a meteorite strike, as the crater is surprisingly deep in proportion to its diameter. In fact, the actual depth cannot yet be determined, as the shaft is choked by rock debris part of the way down, blocking any further orbital scans. It appears that a conventional excavation is the only way to find out what lies below. Nice. We will go get that in a minute. Scientists leveled up. Scientists leveled up. There's the archaeological site. Just waiting for the Tereshkova to come back. There it is. So the Tereshkova. Well, we'll just finish off these. I just like to have the information about these. Then we can decide what we want to do. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't 
don't do any researching of uh, anomalies just yet. Could you please survey, 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 and survey this very isolated one here. Real. Right. So actually, this is probably a good time to go and claim Conviab. Because we've got these potentially hostile aliens, again, we're set to, to evasive. He just won't go there. So I'm going to have to take a bit of a risk. It's only a minor one. Set him to passive. We'll move him there. I won't spend any resources just yet. And then the other one is off doing his thing. Yeah, Brill. Back up to speed five. Well, speed three. While we see what happens. Oh, another ancient uh, precursors. Cool, they're up there. Keep an eye on this, because at some point... Where are we? The Vultawum. There's only six... Re artifacts we need to discover and we found their home world and and see we've got one two three four oh we are researching one interesting so there's not that many to find and i wonder well no wonder he slowed down which one's that one where is that go to oh meneth ah no wonder that's going slowly yes okay i thought i'd said no to that obviously misclicked so we find two more of them and we can locate their home world. Void unclouded. The void clouds are, as far as human researchers can tell, among the oldest entities in the universe. They seem to have originated just a scant few billion years after matter as we know it first appeared. The tremendous forces of the young cosmos making something out of nothing. They would have been stars once, but we're not. No idea what that means. Explaining their apparent animal intelligence is more difficult. The answer might lie in the abnormally strong electromagnetic fields that keep them together. Another product of their primordial beginnings. Str it is not con inconceivable that, given enough time, the circulation of this strange stardust and gravity fields aligned in a flexible approximation of neural pathways. Moreover, the clouds appear to be receiving impulses from one another, if not outright communicating light years apart. Quantum entanglement is suspected to play a role in this phenomenon. So we can either, they will not stand in our way, damage to void clouds, or humbling, which is a straight up empire wide boost to physics. I think I will do humbling to start with. Oh, hello, there's a science ship. So there's, as you can see, we can move through them, but they can also move through us. Voila. So yes, it was that science ship, I think, that discovered the archaeological site. Zafra, good for you. I'm just keeping an eye on the ships down here to make sure they're all doing stuff. Hey, Trambodon Starbase has finished its construction queue. So this one is important. If we go and have a look at this one. So this is our border with our hostile neighbours. So already, if we go and look at it in the system view, it's quite a substantial piece of defensive machinery. It's equivalent to our entire fleet. So that is really going to slow down anyone attacking us in the early game. But just to make really sure, I'm going to build a gun battery, a missile battery, and I'm going to go for a comms jammer to slow down uh, the ships attacking and to reduce their chances of disengaging. So we really, really want this to be a good defensive position because it'll, it'll massively decrease the chances that they attack us. Other little thing to note, we've got a star base in this system now. That means we are collecting this trade. However, if you look up here, we are not collecting this trade. So at some point, we're going to have to build star bases with trading posts, uh, but right now defense first. We're ticking away. Another system survey done. Oh, we're in Conviab. So please, can you build that one? 
So again, this one's nice because it just l means we've got control of who's moving from this arm to the one arm to the other. And we're doing really well on uh, influence. Normally I'm complaining about how little influence I've got, but um, right now we've got loads. Et voila. Build the mining stations there, please. Oh, we have encountered some form of aliens in the Wezen system. These strange objects have been flagged as hobgoblins. We should proceed with caution. Another Arctic world, but it's still a planet. Let's go in and have a look at these guys. Whoa, look at them. 1.7 thousand of something. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to tangle with 1.7 thousand of anything at the minute, so... Yeah. Run away, run away. And we've got adaptive bureaucracy. So that's pushed up our admin cap a little bit, which is nice. Still not enough, though. We're still struggling a little bit. What have we got then? Um, so we've got society research, which at some point is actually going to start becoming in quite handy. Although we've got loads of society research. I forgot to say this earlier, sorry. Look, look at the society research we've got coming in from the observation posts. So they are well worth doing. I'm not particularly thrilled by any of these, I've got to be honest. You'll hear me say this a number of times. If you need to use your armies on the ground, you're in big trouble. Certainly defensively. So, not too bothered about that yet. Hydroponics... Uh, what have we got? Worth remembering, I know, somewhere out in space, we've got this person who specialises in biology. So, I'm going to bring her home. Yep. So at least we're doing something she's really good at, because you'll get a nice boost. 15% research speed. Um, we're not really short on food. Do we want this component? 100% shield damage? Maybe. If we find somebody who only uses shields on their ships, it could come in handy. I'm going to go for this, because it's cheap. And it'll give us a small boost. Go on, we'll do that. Kefoth. Oh, I've taken the leader off you. Yes, that's a bit unsporting of me. So if we pop the leader back on there, and then same drill, just survey. Get these last few systems surveyed, please. And then we can put you onto more fruitful things. Well done, well done. Build those mining stations. So that's just catching up on the stuff we'd skipped trying to rush that planet. Oh, the Tereshkova. What are you up to? You are also doing nothing. Come on, please get on with something. It's worth double-checking after you've had a hostile encounter, because they do panic a little bit, so orders may go. I can't remember if that was just me making an error or not. A large amount of ship debris can be found in the orbit around this planet, possibly the remnants of some kind of massive fleet action. Sure, we'll research that. Just see down here how these guys are doing. Okay, so they've they've taken Ravanic. Probably not a great shock that they've done that. I suppose in principle we should probably go down and take Ozia if we can. Which we well, it's not a great system. But it's better that we have it. Hey, Voltawum Virtual Reality Center. Voltaum engineers at some point built a massive orbital complex near Meneth B3. Dedicated to computer research, strangely they seem to have ignored the normally popular field of artificial intelligence to focus exclusively on virtual realities and massive computer simulations. Most of the complex has been ruined by weapons fire and micrometeoroids, but what remains is in remarkable condition given the station's age. Interesting, so we've got a special project. Let's have a quick look on that. It'll be under the Voltaum, because it's Voltaum. So on Meneth B, we need to have a scientist. So in fact, let's just do that straight away. You can see there, there it is, Orbital Research Complex. Just research that, please. You've done the hard bit now. You might as well get the, uh, the project while you're there. And we have plenty of alloys. In fact, we've got loads of influence as well. 
So I'm just going to bump this up, bump, 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 and reinforce. Notice, I'm keep, keep an eye on that. We've got two things that limit our navy at the moment. We have naval capacity. At the moment, it's 20. That can be improved in several ways. There's technologies. You can build anchorages, which are here, I think. Yeah, there we go. You can build anchorages to give yourself more fleet capacity. Um, there are jobs, uh, soldiers, things like that. But it's also worth bearing in mind, so you can have this many ship. You can have this many ships in your empire, twenty for us at the moment. There is also a command limit, so one admiral can only command so many ships. So at the moment, it is twenty is the limit of what we can command. So that's just worth bearing in mind as well. Oh, yeah, command limit twenty. So you may have to, you may have to think about how you put your ships together. Oh, hello. Sirius has an unemployed person. How are we looking? Pretty good for everything, to be honest. Pretty good for everything. I guess we'll build some more energy. Just to get them doing something. Mining station. Wonderful. So let's go get this one. And then we are pretty much blocked after that, unfortunately. But they're all blocking each other, so yeah, it's probably not so bad. We have sensors report a shipwreck of unidentified origin in orbit of Hazra. We shall research that, sure. Signs of a battle. There is clear evidence that a massive space battle took place in close orbit of Badukan. Three at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one side of the planet is pockmarked with craters from their stray weapons blasts, and scans from the UNS Explorer have picked up several hulks on the ground. Though these wrecked ships are all very in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains at all after the damage they must have sustained is a testament to their advanced design. Science officer Liang Mao is preparing an expedition to sift through these derelict hulls for any valuable technologies. So we have a um, special project. Again, let's just see where that one is. Oh, we've got Investigate Hobgoblins, which we're not doing. I should have done that straight away. So I'm going to do that now. And then we've got Mount Graveyard Expedition. So I'm just tracking that on the map, so it should be nice and easy to find. There it is. And sure, let's just do that now. Why not? We'll do that while we're here. Wonderful. So that is our star base improving. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, calm down. So our star base, if you look now, has a, a defensive power of 924, which in the early game is a lot. That's, that's going to act as a real deterrent for them attacking us. Meanwhile, over on Meneth B3, the archaeological part project completed. In fact, let's separate these out. The archaeologists investigating the Voltauan orbital complex above Meneth B3 have stumbled upon an interesting find. They managed to recover a partial copy of what was apparently a fairly popular multi-usable virtual reality game enjoyed by billions of Voltauan across their empire. Though the game takes place in a fictional and highly satirised version of their contemporary society, it has proved an invaluable source of information on both their language and customs. So we find some artefacts, a Voltauam artefact, we need six if you remember, and a bit of physics, which actually is pretty good. I mean, 150 is six months worth of physics. We'll take that. That is done. And then we've, oh, the, the ship that we found. Our crew aboard the UNS Walter Raleigh report that the ha Hazra shipwreck appears to have been the result of an unexpected geomagnetic stolar storm. The supply ship suffered a complete loss of life support systems and sustained inoperable damage, drifting until it entered Hazra's gravity well. There are no survivors. The ship's cargo hold does indeed contain a notable amount of minerals. However, the capital, 
the captain of the UNS Walter Raleigh cautions that the construction indicates Valdarian design. I believe we hate the Valdarians and they hate us. Yeah, that's true. We have tense relations. <laughs> oh dear. So, it is highly likely that those minerals belong to the Valdari Synergetics, and they may be displeased should we lay claim to them. So we can get 300 minerals and upset someone who already hates us. We definitely don't need the influence. I'm gonna, I'm gonna nick the minerals. They shouldn't have rivaled us. If they wanted minerals, they should have been our friends. Ooh. And if you could join the party that is actually doing some research, please. That would be lovely. Well done. Right, here we go. So somebody has offered us a migration treaty. It is rock dudes. The human people should not be prisoners on the United Nations of Earth, and neither should our own people be limited to inhabit our territory. Let us agree to remedy this. So this is the con conclave of Lontok. So it's worth having a quick look at their species. I'm just going to close that for a second. If you look on the expansion planner, because we can see a load of the planets, let's look at the ones that haven't been surveyed. Oh, we haven't got that many. All right, the ones that have been surveyed. Um, we've got a couple of planets we can't really inhabit well, and Mars, which we can terraform later, hopefully, if you look, terraforming candidate. So there's a chance these guys might actually be able to live on Arctic worlds, in which case having a few of them in our empire might be really good. So let's just have a quick look at species. At the moment, it's just our empire, humans. But in the wider world, and I'm going to sort them by population, because if you look, there's actually already quite a lot, many of whom are essentially zero. We have humans. We have Valdari, who hate us. Actually, we're the most populous race. That's cool. Um, Valdari, who hate us. Fatitians, who inhabit very similar planets. And then, actually, this is pretty good. Tharborites, who are lithoids. Does it tell us they're lithoids here? Yeah, here we go. Worth noting, they are very good in terms of inhabitability, because they're basically rocks. They don't grow fast. I'm um, army health, who cares? But the, um, the lifetime's good. They're charismatic, so they're good at um, jobs that create amenities. Talented, so they get extra leader levels. Not very good. We don't want them doing unity jobs. But the big one is they are Arctic preference. And again, go back to our planets. If we go to expansion planner, which I've now lost. There we go. We've got two Arctic worlds we want to colonize. So sure. Sure. I will take that in a million. Every day. I will agree to that. Note you don't want to accept every single treaty you're offered. When this ticks round over the month you'll see it does cost you some influence but that's fine I think these guys are going to be great I probably could have waited with that actually I've just just realized I can't actually colonize the planets yet but when I can it's going to be amazing notice also how the arctic world meneth has changed to green because I now have a species that can inhabit, inhabit that very well um, let's let that tick on for a little while. Oh, trade proposal. Um, I just said don't do all of these, but on the other hand, we've got still got fairly large amount of influence. Wow, from having hated us, they really love us. Sure. They're quite small, so I'm not convinced they have a huge trade value, but do you know what? Sure. Let's do it. I'm guessing they still hate us. Well, no, they, they quite like us, actually. So we could now become associated with their federation, which is essentially an alliance. Um, they We can't join their federation because they still... Well, we can't join with the Fetitians and the Erdurga. Why can we not join with you guys? Fetitians, why do you hate us? Oh, you're still wary and belligerent. Yeah, that's not going to be good. And so the Endurga will still block us. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the Fetitians, and I'm going to improve relations. The Lontox love us. 
So let's see if we can get these all on side. At least I may not join their federation, but let's see if we can get them on side enough that I could if I wanted to. Righty ho. So a bit of a builder episode, that one. Um, we are kind of, I think we're over the 20 minutes, so I'm going to call it there. If you have liked this video, please do like it down below. And please do subscribe if you're enjoying the series. Finally, if you want to ask me questions in real time, midday on a Sunday, I'll be on Twitch. Otherwise, I've been Norse here. Have a good one.